There is the mechanism to which you get to neutral, the size of the hikes, which apparently broadly there seems to be consensus forming around 75 basis points. But there also is a question of where exactly neutral is. Where is it for you and do you think you will get there by the end of this year? Uh, well, there are various estimates. Of course, this is unobservable. It's like a Yeti. Nobody has ever seen it. But the estimates are in the range of 1% to 2%, we typically most use. So I think by the end of this year, we would get to the upper uh, side of this range. So 75 okay, basis points is a big step, but I think that would be appropriate at the, at the current moment. OK, and you think that for, for October, good to speak to you, Governor. You've said that at the moment you'd be closer to 75 basis points. What is the, the best argument that you can yes, use right. to take other members of the Governing Council with you in that? Because others we've spoken to this morning have uh, been talking about lower numbers than 75. I think we are still providing the accommodation to the economy. The rates are still uh, in the accommodative uh, part of the range. So uh, removing that would be necessary at the moment. And uh, of course, currently the distance to the interest rates that would ensure 2% inflation over medium term is still relatively wide. So we can take big steps. Uh, to speed this up. So the front-loading story, bigger step story, I think, still plays out. And later on, when we approach uh, higher levels of interest rates, of course, when we have the two-sided effects of tightening too much or tightening too little, uh, then the mm. steps uh, would become smaller and more cautious. But uh, it, we are not there yet. OK. And, and, and how aggressive should other measures be uh, as well, Martins? I mean, we're looking at CPI. I know in Latvia, some of the highest levels around the Eurozone, 21.5%. Um, but of course, the policy must be set for the, for, the, for the whole Eurozone. How does quantitative tightening play in here? We've heard what Christine Lagarde, uh, President Lagarde, thinks about when QT discussions should start. When do you think those QT discussions should begin? Well, internally, as everybody, we should do the homework, so we should discuss now. But it doesn't mean that we should communicate this already as a step that we make. I think at the current uh, juncture, moving with interest rates, hiking the rates, is a more appropriate step. And then uh, towards the end of the year, of course, the possibility of starting QT elements uh, would be more ripe. But uh, by all means, we would need to move to the balance sheet instruments as well. Because, uh, of course, we will want to work more with the long end of the yield curve as well. You, uh, you see pressure, though, to Anna's point. You know, other parts of Europe are going to have trouble with higher rates. Italy, for example, facing renewed pressure. Um, in its bond market after the election results over the last weekend. Does this mean you're going to deploy the, the TPI, the Transmission Protection Instrument? Uh, TPI is not meant for any kind, for all kinds of, of volatilities in the market. It has certain conditions for the, it to be turned on. And of course, if there will be need in the financial markets, we will consider it. But. Uh, Political changes that affect the policies does not necessarily qualify as you know, market volatility, which is not fundamentals based. So we always have these backstop instruments uh, available, but it is not that they will be employed in every and each case. And if you currently look at the financial markets uh, and coming back to the rate increases, we've seen that the 50 basis points, 75 basis points were taken by the markets relatively confidently. And that also provides confidence to me that 75 basis points would be an appropriate choice for our next meeting. But is there a spread over buns that makes you, uh, that triggers the TPI if you're looking at 300 no. basis points or four? We do not have, yeah. No. We do not have specific uh, spread levels that would trigger specific instruments. And let me remind you that we have at least three instruments in this area. One is PEP, uh, reinvestment flexibility, and then we have uh, your mentioned TPI. But we also have the OMT. OK, so clearly you are watching spreads and the bond market. Let's talk about foreign exchange as well. How concerned are you about the depreciation of the euro? 
Of course, weak euro does not help with inflation because it pries inflation into longer run through energy prices and all other imports. So it is a problem. But at the same time, uh, when supply side uh, gets fixed when supply side, well, supply chains improve and get back to normal levels. Weaker euro may also help uh, as a hedge against deeper inflation. So uh, mm. yes, it does worry me. Of course, we do not have specific uh, exchange rate levels that we would target, but this does come into the inflation forecast, and weak euro does increase inflation. That is very true. Governor, I'm sitting here in the UK and clearly there's a lot of turmoil in UK assets at this point. I wonder if you're watching that situation, mm -hmm. if it, if it uh, teaches us anything useful about exits from easy monetary policy, about QT or about fiscal actors and, and, and the types of policy they should introduce right now. By all means, by all means, uh, it teaches us a lot. It uh, shows us that doing homework is very important before we move with specific instruments. Understanding the interlinkages is extremely important. It's also extremely important for the central bank to move in when it's necessary for financial stability reasons. Uh, but at the same time, of course, it also tells us a lot about the policy mix. What is the efficient policy mix? What is the role of fiscal policy? What's the role of the monetary policy? And of course, there's macro prudential. I would also say structural policies. And uh, in the past years, when we saw that you know the uh, COVID-19 crisis, fiscal policy and monetary policy going by and large hand in hand, and there most likely is some blurring of the lines. Uh, what is the task of each of the policies? So I think it very clearly says that independent of the central bank is paramount and clear mandate is extremely important to deliver efficient policy mix that can carry us through different volatilities in the markets and in the economy.